Okay, and hi again, Attorney Steve Vondren, business and real estate lawyer. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Ask Attorney Steve. And we are talking in this video about sample California mutual release and settlement agreement. Okay, so what does that mean? Basically, when you settle a lawsuit, here's my website, askattorneysteve.com, take you to my website. But when you settle a lawsuit, you basically, the end, the very end of the lawsuit, you're going to have a settlement agreement, okay? So if you're involved in a lawsuit, a business dispute, real estate dispute, intellectual property dispute, you name it, if you get to the end, personal injury, you get to the end, there's going to be a mutual settlement agreement. Now, sometimes it's just called a release agreement. Sometimes it's just called a settlement agreement. Um, you know, lots of times in, in the kinds of works I, I do, you're basically looking at a mutual release. That means both parties are releasing, they're settling, they're resolving this case once and for all. So I have a sample document up on Scribd. You can find it on my website. You can go to askattorneysteve.com and just type in... Um, you know, contract, basically contract, you'll come up in my search bar. Uh, but let's go over here to Scribd and let's take a look at this document. Okay, so I have it up here on the web. You can download it. It's free, no charge, um, bringing you the information that you need. So it's free. And you basically just take a look. But this is kind of the sample terms you're going to see in a mutual release and settlement agreement. This is going to be a quick and dirty overview. I am not going to discuss all clauses that may be in there. These are just some of the clauses you're likely to see, okay? So usually it talks about the beginning section is really just, you know, here's the parties, here's who they are. Then there's a recital section, you know, and usually whereas is the, the choice of words for, for lawyers. Don't ask me where it came from, but whereas the parties have a bona fide dispute regarding blah, 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 blah. And so what you usually want to do is like a whereas this and whereas that, one, two, three, four, five, whatever you want to do, but to outline your dispute so you can lock in what the, what the dispute was all about um, for other purposes. So you want to be detailed about what the dispute was about, okay? You, there's a section in here where the parties continue to dispute the allegations. Neither one admits to anything, of course. You never want to admit to anything. That's how these agreements go. Um, and as, as you can see here, in order to avoid few further lit litigation expenses and uncertainties, blah, 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 uh, the parties agree to the following. So you'll usually have a little section in there on payment. You may have other terms. You know, sometimes cases are settled on other terms besides payments, like take down the defamatory postings, you know, um, you know, fix the repairs in the, in the property, those kinds of things. So it can be all kinds of terms. So you're going to have a terms, a payment section, those kinds of things. You're going to put insert your mailing address, where the check should be mailed to, when it should be mailed to you. Uh, I think five business days is a reasonable time. So, um, but that may, may differ. And the, the, these terms are all negotiable. These are the terms that the parties negotiate, okay? So you may find a little section on tax reporting. You may find something about um, both parties being represented by counsel. Uh, where this is important is because the usual general rule in California anyway, we practice in California and Arizona, is that ambiguities in a contract are going to be construed against the drafting party. Okay, that's the general rule. If you can't tell what's going on, vague and ambiguous terms, construed against the drafting party. If both parties are represented by counsel or have a chance to be represented by counsel, then you can agree that, that no ambiguities as it says, no ambiguities shall be construed against either party. So that's what you want in case there's a dispute that arises later. Um, usually, upon execution of a settlement agreement, lots of times parties are going to bear their own costs and attorney fees. Again, negotiable. Lots of times you're going to see a confidentiality clause. Parties agree to maintain uh, the conditions confidentially unless there needs to be a lawsuit, a subpoena, reporting, you know, those kinds of things. So confidentiality is usually part of it. Non-disparagement also usually a part of it. Uh, don't say anything negative about me and I won't say anything negative about you in a nutshell. Um, again, no admissions. Uh, nobody's admitting anything here. Choice of law form. You may say, well, you know, if there's a dispute, the, this, this dispute will be heard in, in regards to the settlement, getting the payment, this and that, you know. Uh, pick a court that will retain jurisdiction. It could be County of Orange, Los Angeles, San Francisco. If you're in Arizona, it could be Maricopa County, Arizona, and so forth and so on. So um, you want to just put in a little choice of law form. Severability, this is something that you'll see basically. Well, all this means is 
if any portion of this agreement is void or invalid against public policy, whatever, whatever, then the rest of the contract will remain in effect. So it's one of those things. Um, binding effect, the agreement shall be binding upon uh, beneficiaries, heirs, guardians, assessors, assigns, all, all kinds of things. You can see all these wonderful words we use. So I'm not going to go into detail and take up your time on that, but the binding effect of this agreement on your 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 uh, successors and assigns and whatnot. Now, this is a big clause that's real important. When people do their own contracts, they always forget to put this many times, but it's called a merger clause. This is what you learn in law school, merger clause. Basically, you're saying that everything that we've agreed to, you may, have, you may end up going back and forth with your opponent for two hours, two days, two months, uh, you know, six months entering into a settlement agreement, but all this merger clause says is everything that we talked about, eh, all our terms are contained in this final agreement. If it's not in here, it's not admissible. It's not, it's not something that we're going to be bound by. So you have this, what we call the merger clause. And I, I love that. I just love the name of that. I don't know why the merger clause. Do you have a merger clause in there? And if not, you know, you may have a situation where if there's a dispute, the parties can go into court and say, that's not what this meant. And, you know, he told me he was going to do that. They said they were going to do this. The company was supposed to do that, so forth and so on. OK, so merger clause, very important. you got your counterparts. You know, really, that's very simple. All that means is I can sign and fax this over to you. You can sign and fax it over me. The copies will be deemed original. So it's all good. We can put the parts together and we got a contract. So that's really all that is. Uh, nice to have in there. Amendments, um, any agreement to this may only be modified in writing. That's usually a standard clause. Uh, you don't want any oral modifications of anything going on here. Headings, all you're saying here is lots of different headings. You know, you can see 13, 14, 15, 16. They're just saying the headings are for reference only. Uh, does, it doesn't, you know, shall not be used to interpret or construe the language of the terms and conditions of this agreement. So you have a little headings clause, meaning uh, this is in case there's a, a problem over interpretation of the settlement agreement at some future date, okay? Uh, you have time, time is of the essence, um, you know, let's get it done kind of thing. The things in here have to get done. Um, waiver of the Civil Code Section 1542, this is a big one. Uh, we wrote a good blog on this if you're wondering how to bust a 1542 clause. It's not easy, usually these things are pretty firm, but I wrote a blog on some of the grounds where these clauses have been busted, so to speak. But basically all these are gonna do is release all your claims known, now known, will exist in the future, anything, blah, blah, blah. So if you're entering in a settlement agreement, the parties want to buy their peace. They do not want to be bound by some future litigation that pops up because you say, hey, wait a second, I forgot to sue you for this. So the 1542 clause, usually those are highly enforceable. However, you got to look closely at those. You need to get the statutory language in there. You can check out my free document in here and take a look at that, okay? So that is your 1542 waiver, very important. And really just an execution section. Now don't, like I said, keep in mind, there's lots of other clauses that you might want to put in here. It just really depends on what type of dispute you're litigating or arbitrating, or if it's a mediation and you're settling your case following a mediation. So you want to just make sure you're, if you don't know what you're doing, that you're hiring counsel, getting a good firm like ours, litigation real estate firm, and getting them in there, making sure that you're buttoning up your rights, okay? Then there's an execution section. You sign it, date it. You say if you're the pres president of the company, so forth and so on. And then sometimes, not in this one, but sometimes you'll get these signatures notarized so you can lock those signatures down so that people can't say, that wasn't my signature. So you want to lock it down, okay? So that's a real quick, basic, dirty overview of what you're looking at when you're entering into a mutual release and settlement agreement. This is Attorney Steve. If you need legal help, find out more information about our services at askattorneysteve.com. Don't be afraid to download this document. Get me from seven views, which is pretty lame, but I just uploaded it, so I'm hoping for greater success. And um, yeah, find us at askattorneysteve.com. Feel free to share this video on your social media networks. We appreciate your followership. And you can find out more um, at, at Attorney Steve Videos, our main YouTube channel. We hope you subscribe. Okay, have a great day. Thanks a lot.